Hi folks, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a custom shortcuts menu in your browser for QuickBooks Online. And it will look like this, basically. You see right here where it says QBO shortcuts, that's a folder I created with a bunch of shortcuts in it. Once I click on that, you're gonna see that we have a whole bunch of options. And for example, if I wanna go to the chart of accounts, I simply just click on chart of accounts from that shortcuts menu and it will jump straight into the chart of accounts in my QuickBooks Online. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm gonna click here under overview so we go back into the home page. You don't need to go into a shortcuts menu to go into the chart of accounts. You can simply just go in product. You can click on the gear menu and then click on chart of accounts, whatever it is, and I can get to it. Why do I need to set up a custom shortcuts menu to access different places in QuickBooks? I get it, you actually don't need to have that, but I'm gonna tell you where this could be very useful. For example, let's say I'm creating a new invoice. So I happen to be in the invoice screen. Not every screen gives you the full menu of options. Some of the screens inside QuickBooks Online encompass the entire screen and you cannot jump anywhere else to get it to some other place in QuickBooks Online. So if I wanted to clicky go, quickly go into the chart of accounts from here, I would have to open a new tab, log into QuickBooks Online, and go from there. Let me show you. If I wanted to open the chart of accounts without closing the screen, I open up my custom shortcuts menu, I hold the control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac, then I click on my shortcut, like chart of accounts, and it will open up the chart of accounts in a separate tab. That way, my initial screen doesn't get messed up. You can do this with every single thing that's in there. So for example, I click on QBR shortcuts, hit control on the PC or, or command on the Mac, click on search and open up an additional tab. So it makes it really, really easy for me to quickly create multiple tabs to multiple places inside QuickBooks Online. The other thing that makes uh, creating a custom shortcuts menu worth it is sometimes you discover things you didn't even know QuickBooks uh, could do. For example, I'm gonna click on the QBR shortcuts I'm gonna click on products and services, and then there's this thing called price rules. You may have never heard of price rules, probably because you have to click on like 10 different places to get into price rules to see what it is. So you can discover there's a lot of features in your QuickBooks Online you're not even accessing just because you don't know how to get to them. So for example, I go into price rules, and that takes me to an entirely different screen for me to configure custom pricing. Now, right now, price rules was disabled, so I'm gonna show you how to turn it on. I'm gonna click on the gear menu. I'm gonna click on account and settings. And then I'm gonna go into advance. Advance right here. Sorry, not advance, sales. Go into turn on price rules and then turn them on. So you kind of have to know that you have to turn that on for that to work. But that's just an example of how there's so many hidden things inside QuickBooks Online. So I'm gonna go back into my shortcuts menu, go into products and services, go into price rules, and then it will get into the price rules page. I'm gonna click on create rule, and then I see this wonderful tool that allows me to create custom prices based on multiple things, such as prices for individual customers, prices for products and services. Deep dive into price rules is probably a subject for an entire different video, but it's just one example of the many things you can discover by, um, by having a shortcuts menu that has everything in it. Now, my shortcuts menu, the one I created and the one that I built, I built about a year and a half and I continuously go back and fix it, update it, add more stuff to it. For example, in the latest edition I created in August of 2021, I added this one called All Reports that contains literally every single report that is in uh, QuickBooks. So I can go into any of these, click on estimates by customer or whatever report, and it goes straight into that report. Now, if you don't have my shortcuts menu, you can build your own. And don't worry, I'll tell you how you can get mine. But the way you build your own is first, you're gonna click on the three little lines on the top right of your Google Chrome browser. And this only works really well in Google Chrome. So I probably should have mentioned that earlier. And then we're gonna go into bookmarks and then we're gonna click on show bookmarks bar. You have to do that because if you don't have it checked, you're not gonna see anything in there under your URL bar for you to add bookmarks. So we're gonna turn that on, go to show bookmarks, and now we see that, that kind of line under the URL line. And then in there I can create my own folders. 
So for example, I'm going to right click on that empty space, click on add folder. And then let's say, for example, I want to create one called reports. Okay. And then I click on save. So now I have a folder is empty right now for reports, but let's say I want to save a PNL and a balance sheet and AR aging report, the most common reports that I run. So I'm going to go into reports. Then let's say I pull the first report, the profit and loss, click on that. And then once I have the report up, this QuickBooks file doesn't have any data. That's why you don't see it. I'm going to click all dates. So I might have some data in there. No, it's completely blank. Uh, so in this file, there's no data, but there's my profit and loss. I would, I can save this report by dragging and dropping the URL that's up here into that folder. So I simply just click and drag in there and it drops it into that folder. Then I click on that folder and I have to right click on that new URL I put in there, click on edit, and then I call this profit and loss. Now there's a little caveat to the reports. Uh, when you create your own shortcuts menu and you create your reports, you kind of have to create one per company file. So if you work with multiple company files, you have to do that. And I'll explain to you why. I'm going to edit that URL because you're going to see inside the URL all the way up to right here where it says uh, P-A-N-D-L. Everything after that is actually going to save the current settings of the report that you saved. So the date, the company name, accrual cash, all that stuff will be saved in there. Uh, um, so when you run it, that will show up. So if you don't delete that extra part, so I'm going to delete it now. So if you don't go in there and delete that extra part and leave it up to what's called the core URL, um, you're going to save some additional things in that URL. So when you run the report in a different company file, you may get weird stuff in there that you're not expecting to see. So particularly for reports, that's the caveat. You have to go in there and clean out everything after uh, the token name of the actual report. Now, again, if you get my shortcuts menu, the one that I have, every single report that's in there has already been cleaned up for that. So you can use this one uh, custom shortcuts menu for any company file, regardless of how many company files you manage. But again, you can build your own. You don't have to buy mine. You can build your own. Let's do the balance sheet, for example. I'm going to go to reports, go back into reports, and then pull up my balance sheet, pull that up in there. And I got my balance sheet up. Then I'm going to click and drag the URL and drop it into reports. I'm going to have to click there again. And I have to right click on that and edit and change the name. So we're going to call this balance sheet. As I mentioned earlier, I have to look at this URL, go all the way to the beginning, and I have to delete all the extra junk that's after the token ID. So right here it says token equals balance sheet up to that. That's the last point. Everything else after that. I need to delete again because I don't want to save the current report settings in there. And if I want to run, uh, use the same shortcuts menu for multiple company files, I need to clean all that up. So that's all you only need to do that if you're building your own shortcuts menu. So you can go through QuickBooks, click on every single thing that's in here, click on invoices and bring that over and then, and then come in here. Uh, that, that one already says invoices. That's great. Then click on customers. And then click and drag that down over here. And then, okay, that's in there. So sometimes the title comes over. Sometimes you have to go back and edit and change the title. So you can go through every single area in QuickBooks, click and drag, and make your own custom reports menu. I strongly recommend that, again, because you can control click or command click and quickly open those reports. What's also pretty neat, I'm going to close some of these tabs here, is that you can actually right click on the folder itself. So right now I got uh, four uh, links in there. I can right click on the folder itself and click on open all in a new window. And if I do that, click on open all, it opens everything that's in there in one shot, each on a separate tab. So in one shot, I open my PL, my balance sheet, my invoices, my customers. So if you have a set of four or five things that you always open all the time, you can create your own custom folder and in one click open all the tabs in one shot. That's going to save you tons and tons of time. Now, if you want to buy my shortcuts menu that contains every single clickable area in QuickBooks, and I'll add one more thing, sort of the value of my shortcuts menu, is when you click on any of these, you will notice that some of these links have a dot at the end, or they would have a dot, a dot at the end, or two dots. And basically, a dot at the end, it means it requires essentials plus or advanced for it to work. 
So if I have QuickBooks Online, a simple start, and I try to do like a new recurring sales receipt, for example, that dot means it's just not going to work. So it's there, but it's not going to work. If you see two dots, for example, let's see if I go into vendors here and you see purchase order. If you see two dots, you need to have at least plus or advanced for it to work. And then if you see uh, three dots, like all these ones under advanced features, you need to be under advanced for it to work. So it's a little sort of like mini cheat sheet I did for myself. So I know that if I try to open something in, in simple starter essentials and it has one dot or two dots, I know that's not going to work. So that's just something to avoid some frustration when you download this on your own and you click on it and you can't access stuff. That's the reason why. And I'll just give you an example. Um, for example, let's see what version of QuickBooks I have here. This one is, um, I believe this one's advanced. So this one's going to have everything. But let me switch over to, let's say, Simple Start and I'll show you what would happen if you try to access something that's in the shortcuts menu, but it's not uh, available in the version. So I switch company files. Let's just double check that I'm working on uh, Simple Start to make sure that we know that. And again, this is one of the nuances of working with QuickBooks Online is the version you're working with gives you limitation to what um, features are out there. So this is Simple Start. This is the least expensive version of QuickBooks, which is um, $25 a month. And let's say I try to access something that Simple Start doesn't have. So I go into Customers and Sales, and we go, um, let's say, here to Customer Types. So if I click on that, that is going to give me um, an error. Uh, just nothing is going to show up. Uh, because you can't do that in uh, QuickBooks Online Simple Start. So again, those little things in there matter. Uh, there are some little nuances, like for example, uh, we talked about uh, price rules. Those are available in plus. Those two little dots means it's available in plus. So if you try to click on that and it doesn't work, and you happen to have plus or advanced, um, you might have to just do a little more research and figure out where in the settings you need to turn that on. Same thing with inventory, or uh, purchase orders, those things need to be actually be turned on uh, for you to be able to access them. But as long as you have the right version, you should be able to. So again, if you wanna get this shortcuts menu, exactly how I have it, I'm gonna put a link in the description below, which will take you to a landing page that looks like this. You can click on purchase shortcuts kit, and it'll take you to the purchase page, and it's $25. You pay that once, and then every time I do an update, you can log back in, into this portal and download the latest version. I do about four updates a year. Every time a new feature comes out um, in QuickBooks Online or something changes, like for example, I'll give you an example. Let's go into uh, maybe uh, customers and sales and see customer types. So for example, just recently, customer types only became available in QuickBooks Online Plus and above. It used to be available in Essentials before. So I literally have to go in, in there and change this, I'm gonna add the extra dot just to indicate that that's not available in Essentials. And then I'll go in there and update so you can always download the latest version of this shortcuts menu. That stuff is gonna happen. There's gonna be new updates, new things changing. So you're not only gonna purchase that shortcuts menu, so you can import it into, um, into your browser easily, you will be able to get the updates as well. Let me show you how to import them into the browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete what I already have in here. So I'm gonna go in there and delete that, and then go in here and delete that. So I deleted them, so I have nothing in there right now. I, ha I literally have no shortcuts in there. I, I can right click in there and click on Bookmark Manager. And then after you have purchased and downloaded my uh, shortcuts menu, you click on the three little dots on the right, and then click on Import Bookmarks. You're gonna have uh, the, the file you downloaded, uh, it's gonna be a zip file that you have to unzip into your desktop or documents or whatever. Then once you do that, you're gonna select that HTML file called Hector's QBO Shortcuts, click on Open, and that's going to import them in there. Then you'll be able to see them and they will just show up in there perfectly. I do wanna add one more thing. Here are my QBO Shortcuts, down here where it says Other Resources. I have a whole bunch of resources I recommend that you can check out. There's one particular resource called QBO Reports available by version. The link is in there, but I'm also going to put this link in the description. So you don't have to buy my shortcuts menu to get access to this sheet. I'm gonna put this link in the description. And what this does is this gives me a list of all the reports, absolutely all the reports that are available inside QuickBooks Online. 
and you have three columns here that tells you whether or not the report is only available in plus advanced essentials or simple start. So for example, down here, business snapshot, uh, that's only available in essentials and a plus or advanced not available in simple start. However, the ones that don't say NA, the ones that only say no. So for example, the balance sheet summary is not available in, um, in simple start because it's not, the link is not there. You can actually click, it's a clickable link in the spreadsheet. You can click on that link and it will open up the report regardless of the version of QuickBooks that you have. So some of the reports that are not available in simple start, again, the lowest version of, of QuickBooks online, I'll click on this filter here and just filter them out just to show you the ones that, are, that, are, that say no. So all these here, which is roughly about 17 reports, are not natively a version, uh, available in uh, Simple Start, but you can access them because now you have the link. So the links are in each of these. You can just click on any of these and they will open in uh, QuickBooks Online Simple Start, even though the reports are not natively available. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.